I do find the most interesting in ever get a little series in China. We uh, arrived uh, October last year, and uh, of course, ever since it has been an amazing journey. Not only in Beijing, but in China in general. Uh, China has a lot to offer. Uh, impressive landscape, uh, massive modernization, uh, hardworking people, uh, rich cuisine, uh, rich culture, uh, diversity, uh, while within unity. So uh, for any layman, let alone an ambassador, uh, of course, it offers an amazing uh, experience and a unique one. And uh, we all know that uh, China and Egypt are good friends and uh, we are Asian civilization. Yes. So what is the most remarkable characteristic of our friendship in your eyes? Well, uh, the, the friendship, friendship is put to test when there are challenges or when there are problems. Yeah, and this has been manifested recently. Even though I'm not going to go back uh, years, but just recently when we had the uh, pandemic and when there are so, like, so many states, uh, uh, we have seen so many uh, uh, selfish practice between sta some states to keep the vaccines to themselves, to keep uh, uh, care only about the uh, public health of their own people, whereas in fact that China uh, stood as a bright example of extending this friendship to uh, developing the, the world, and especially in our part of the world, in Africa, in Egypt. So, what achievement has made yes. for Egypt and the framework of the alternative initiative, and how to better engage in the future? Well, you know, uh, I consider the Better World Initiative as one of the foremost development initiatives. Uh, put forth recently in, 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 uh, in our contemporary history uh, without any exaggeration and the record speaks for itself. As we now mark the uh, 10th anniversary of the Better World Initiative launched by President Xi Jinping, uh, we can really uh, uh, take pride in, 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 in being one of, as Egypt, being one of the early adherents and early uh, members of this, uh, this this initiative, along with other countries, of course. Um, uh, as you know, the Better Road Initiative uh, focuses on development, on connectivity, on uh, shared benefits, and these are all principles that we all subscribe to. Uh, Egypt uh, is privileged with a strategic location. Egypt lies at the crossroads of the continents. Asia, Asia continent, and we also have a part of our territory which lies in Asia, by the way, as you know, uh, Africa and the European continent. So, Egypt lies at the very heart of the world and it's instrumental in being a, a connector, being in taking part of this connectivity that the Better World Initiative, uh, you know, uh, portrays and uh, especially the maritime. Uh, you know, maritime uh, better road, which is, um, of course, uh, important to connect ports, to develop all the trade and, uh, and, uh, and infrastructure along with it. And so Egypt uh, has benefited from this initiative by, been, by developing our ports, by developing our, uh, some of the industrial areas uh, along the Suez Canal uh, zone. Uh, by addressing our infrastructure needs. Of course, we have now a, a massive infrastructure overhaul of the whole Egyptian territory, uh, including the smart cities, including the new administrative capital that is being built also with the Chinese partners. And uh, of course, uh, with the focus on renewable energy that uh, we are all uh, uh, keen to have a, a, a green, uh, green transition and Climate, uh, uh, climate action in you know in place. So all this emphasis has been part of our not only bilateral uh, exchanges with China, but also within the Better Road Initiative with China and the other member uh, states of this very very valuable uh, initiative. 
Our Prime Minister uh, participated in the recent Petra Road uh, Forum uh, in Beijing to commemorate the 10th uh, anniversary, uh, along with a very high level delegation. And so, which shows how uh, keen we are to partake in this uh, initiative and to contribute meaningfully to its success. I was wondering, what's the potential of cooperation with China? Yes. From Egypt's perspective, uh, well, the potentials are, 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 are enormous, and uh, of course, uh, uh, they are all aligned with our national priorities. We have a, 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 a vision of uh, Egyptian development, which is uh, Egypt's Vision 2030, uh, and it focuses as on many priorities that you already mentioned: uh, green economy, infrastructure. Uh, boosting public health and uh, high quality education, uh, digital, digitalization of the, our uh, infrastructure, our economy, and uh, of course, um, renewable energy uh, taking almost 40% of our national energy requirements by 2030, mm -hmm. hopefully. So all these uh, projects are uh, very well uh, attuned and very well aligned with the Belt and Road Initiative and our bilateral exchanges with China and other partners in the world. Uh, of course, uh, I'm speaking from the perspective of the Egyptian ambassador in China, to China. And uh, during this year, I have seen many uh, uh, valuable exchanges to, to put this, all these projects uh, into action to find a viable uh, you know, studies uh, expertise and uh, training and uh, uh, of course uh, within the very solid foundations of friendship and uh, goodwill many of those projects are coming uh, are coming to, to light so uh, and this of course represents for me a personal delight uh, we hope to build on that to uh, you know to uh, generate more development sustainable development and also to give the Chinese investors uh, 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 an enabling climate, a conducive climate to prosper, to use Egypt not only as a, as a market, but a gateway to Africa, a gateway to uh, Middle East, to Southern Europe, uh, of course. And this serves as a very, um, very good example of South-South and even South-North uh, co collaboration. Uh, we want to invite you to mm. share your deep understanding on China's modernization and how will Egypt, your country, yes. pursue your modernization? Yes, well, uh, it's, a, it's a question that really comes to my mind when uh, I have set my foot in uh, Chinese territory, uh, territory in Chinese land. Uh, how this uh, enormous country with enormous population, uh, the biggest population in, in the world, uh, how has it come to uh, to develop this rapidly, and of course, while maintaining uh, its uh, tradition and uh, preserving, as you rightly said, its unique way of, uh, of modernization and uh, and development at the same time, uh, and of course, uh, you know, I have heard so many arguments from both. Uh, uh, Chinese observers, from Western observers, from you know uh, different uh, walks of life, and uh, maybe I could come with my own conclusion. Uh, perhaps not right yet, because I haven't stayed here long enough. I have seen some uh, provinces in China, and I have seen how they were before, like 30 years ago, and how they are faring now, how they are doing now. And of course, uh, uh, records don't lie, and pictures don't lie. And I've seen how uh, people have uh, prospered, how poverty has, uh, absolute poverty has been alleviated, has been eradicated, uh, and uh, how. So, if I am to recommend uh, some uh, aspects of this uh, wonderful experience, I would say. Uh, uh, you have uh, focused on infrastructure, boosting infrastructure, boosting connectivity between different uh, Chinese provinces, high-speed, uh, 
high speed trains, uh, impressive roads, uh, how uh, the agriculture in one province uh, you know, is rapidly uh, 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 transferred to many how energy from one area can be uh, transferred to another area, how prosperity from the east, uh, traditionally the prosperous eastern towns and eastern provinces have uh, trickled or spilled, spilled over to the western provinces, how uh, you have uh, managed to uh, industrialize rapidly, of course. Uh, and uh, we are now in Egypt uh, embodied upon a very ambitious infrastructure projects, uh, in roads, in uh, railways, high-speed railways, much in China, in uh, subways, in uh, smart cities, in, uh, uh, boosting our fiber optics uh, network, uh, broadband uh, use, and uh, and so many of these aspects are now recognized as recipes for modernization. Uh, of course, uh, most of our people are young and they are eager to to have good education. So how can we uh, uh, promote uh, the cultural exchanges? Uh, and the people to build the exchanges between us yes. and uh, especially uh, for the younger generation. I totally agree with you that uh, culture and people to people exchange play a fundamental role in uh, bringing people together in understanding one another. Physical distance can sometimes be an impediment to knowing one another, uh, of course. And, uh, I, 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 as I said, uh, when you read about a country, you read about its culture, its history, it's not like when you visit this country and uh, interact with these people. It goes for every country and, and I think enabling young people. So we have now uh, a very uh, successful program of Arabic teaching for Chinese students and also uh, the Confucius Institutes in Egypt and Africa play a very, uh, um, you know, good uh, part in, in, in teaching um, Chinese to, to uh, Egyptian and African and Arab students. We want to invite you to share one or two or some of your favorite sentences or yes. models from Egypt. And I think many of these stand very useful for us. Uh, like for example, the sentence uh, he is saying we have this it means if you want to swim fast, you have to swim lightly. You don't you don't burden yourself with if you want to walk fast and execute your mission, you have to be relieved of your burdens. You have to take your burdens and you know uh, uh, push them aside. Uh, all these prejudices that you have, put them aside and focus and go, you go fast. Swimming, that does not mean swimming necessarily in, in the strict sense, but swimming, you know, executing your mission.